Creating and controlling a bolt line or a line of bolt definition can be quick and easy. We'll start with a curve and then we'll place a point on the combination of curves, not just a one piece. Establishing an offset of zero puts it at the end. We can then pattern that point, providing an increment of, say, 0.2. This is just a placeholder because we'd like that increment to be driven by a relation. So tools, relation. But we'd like this relation to be on a feature, and we'll pick the pattern itself. Then we'll add a relation for the increment to be equal to the reciprocal of the number of points. By establishing this relationship, we always have a population of points that completely occupy the domain or the entire curve length, regardless of what the value is. Notice that when the sketch is modified, that the array of points stays on the curve, but the zero stays on that very first vertex. What if we want that vertex or the starting point to be at a point of our choosing? We'll move the insert before the pattern, and I'll show a plane here. Then by using the trim function, we can select a piece of the curve, in this case the arc, and a plane in this case, splitting that curve at that plane. Using the flip arrow, we can choose one side, the other side, or in this case, we want to keep actually both pieces. But now I need to make a new domain where I can select one of the pieces, control C, control V, and then using the shift key, I can pick individual pieces, building then a new curve domain. This curve domain has a start and as well as a direction sense middle mouse to complete the feature. Now if I put back that same pattern and edit the references of that very first point, I can establish that the point is now on the copied new domain, not just the piece but the whole of it, and then the pattern completely updates. You'll notice now that the first point is at that zero spot on that trimmed curve. Now if the sketch changes, you'll see that the zero stays on the new vertex created by that trim plane. Let's say for argument's sake that this surface represents a plate that needs a bolt line all the way around its perimeter. By creating a new sketch on that surface, we can establish an offset curve, choosing loop, picking the entire surface and then entering a new value, we'll end up with a curve at an offset all the way around. This curve represents our bolt line. Now we'll reuse the pattern of points that we've already established around the racetrack. By control C, we can then paste special. You'll notice that it's gray, but paste special is usable. And we'll uncheck make copies and use advanced reference. You'll notice the reference is only the one curve. By picking the one piece of the offset array, we can copy that pattern along the new curve. The relationship that we applied to the pattern feature itself is also copied. But you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way to the end of the curve, and that's because the array was for a closed loop. If we want the array to go around or from one end to the other, we have to change the increment to be the number minus one. So by putting minus one and a couple of parentheses, we can then establish the array to go from one end to the other. The increment is then calculated correctly. Most of the time, bolt lines don't intersect or even share endpoints. So, by redefining that offset curve, we can add a number of divide trims, breaking the lines into smaller pieces. Using the delete segment command, we can throw away those extra pieces, thereby providing for a space between the bolt lines. And then we can apply a dimensioning scheme that might make sense. From endpoint to endpoint, place a dimension, provide a value. Endpoint to a reference, place, provide a value, and so on. 
Now, in the case where the endpoints are not orthogonal, it gets a little tricky. Point, point, place, and you'll see it's a vertical. Now, if that's a good dimension for you, that's fine. But if you place that dimension in between the two points, you'll notice that you get a point-to-point -point distance. Sometimes you want a dimension to a theoretical point. By adding the sketcher point to that theoretical center, you can then dimension to the point straight line distance. Now that the bolt line is divided into multiple segments, it's a simple matter of copying the point array onto each segment. Each segment then has its own number, and the increment is automatically calculated based on the geometry. Now, we'll take it a step further by establishing what might be the bolt or hole definition on the existing array. First, we'll figure out which is the first point, and then we'll say we'd like a circle. Alternate key, picking that very first point, and we'll put a quick circle on that point. We might want to make it, say, an, an inch, and we might want to say it goes both ways. It'll be a surface, and then on the options pane with capped ends. Call that done. Right click, pattern, and it automatically detects the existing pattern, a reference pattern. This pattern, as well as the point pattern, can be copied together. Paste special, they can then be applied to a, an alternate reference. In this case, we'll pick a new curve, keeping the existing the other two references are exa exactly the same. The second pattern set has its own values to where we can edit the number and the increment again would be automatically calculated. Let's say our array is to represent a slotted hole. By editing the definition of the very first instance, we can edit its shape. And what we'll do here and was we'll just simply delete the circle and replace it with a racetrack. We'll pull up the palette and grab ourselves a racetrack. On the shapes pane, we'll drag it out. Placing it on that same reference, we can change its orientation and so on, providing then a new dimensioning scheme. We'll use the vertical constraint to line it up By changing the section from a circle to a racetrack, it then populates the entire array. But you notice that the array did not follow the curve. So let's change its sketch one more time. And going to the sketch setup, we'll change the reference from the default right plane to a make datum, or we'll make a plane on the fly that goes through that very first point and with the control key down, we'll pick also the curve to make it normal. The reference plane is now through the point, normal to the curve. We'll set it up as the left facing left, and then we'll rearrange our sketch to respect this new reference. A weak dimension. We want to get rid of that weak dimension. and then populates out. Now you notice it didn't update until we redefine the pattern and just hit the check mark. Now you notice that each of these new racetracks respect the normal of the reference curve. Notice that the extruded racetrack doesn't automatically contain an axis. So we'll edit its definition and place a datum point in the sketch. By placing a point, a datum point in an extrusion, it yields an axis. And there, then, in our reference information, we have an axis and a pair of normal planes, a sketch that respects the curve, and so on. So this might be a skeleton or a piece of a skeleton where you define a number of plates or panels that come together along with their supports so that the holes always line up. This concludes the CAD integration tip.
creating and controlling bolt lines.